Hi, this is Mike Ward. I want to talk to you very briefly about how one manages performance. Now, some of this you should have seen before, but uh, I want to move and take this a little step forward. So I'm going to repeat one or two basic things. Now, the purpose of business, as we have already talked about, is not to maximize profit. It's not to maximize the return on net assets, but from an accounting perspective, we want to maximize shareholders' return on equity. That is our basic, most powerful metric, and I'm going to show you that this metric standardizes returns, if you like, uh, across different types of industries. Also, of course, if we're dealing with listed companies, we can look at the share price. And uh, of course, the actual price is not important because you can change the share price by changing the number of shares, but it's the direction and uh, in which the share price goes. So it's possible to have a high return on equity, for example. A company can re release its financial uh, results and have a high return on equity, but the share price may actually go down. Normally, the two would be positively correlated. But the main difference between these two is that accounting measures such as ROE are always backward looking. So they're telling you what was history. It takes three months from the end of the financial year to see actually what the company was doing. Whereas share prices are always looking forward, anticipating the future. So if we've got a share price, we will look at that as well. Just again reiterating, here's Goldman Sachs. They state the key ratio is trying to drive ROE. They've been battling to do that. Now, this uh, little diagram, this, this little chart here, which you'll find on page 79 of your Turning Vision, Vision into Value textbook, is probably the most important conceptual thing you're going to understand or get out of this session. Now, you can see here, I've put seven different industries uh, together, and you can see here is the form of ROE that we are interested in. We are interested in breaking it down into the DuPont format, which says ROE can be made up by the net profit margin times the net asset turnover ratio, which we sometimes just call efficiency or activity, times the financial leverage, uh, in particular measured as one plus the debt to equity ratio, sometimes called the equity multiplier. We've covered this stuff earlier and you'll find that in your book. Now, what I want to show you here is we would like ROE to be 20%. Now, let's start by asking a question about this. Why 20%? Is that good or bad? Well, normally investors are going to benchmark the returns they get off shares from alternative investment opportunities. So in South Africa, you could invest your money into government bonds and government bonds are going to give you a return of, a, of about 9 or 10 percent. So 20 percent is a good, a, a better return on, on this. So I, I've just assumed that. This is obviously going to vary if you happen to be in Japan where interest rates are zero or negative in some parts of the world, then you'd probably be happy with 3 or 4 percent in terms of what you can get out of shares. But we would expect to get a higher return from shares simply because they're more risky for investors. So I'm just starting with the assumption that in each of these seven industries, a 20% ROE is good. Now, you can do the maths here. If you take out your calculator, you will see that if you take 7% and multiply it by 2.5 by times 1.1, you're going to get pretty close to 20%. And similarly, if you look at this uh, electronics um, uh, sector, and in fact, all of these numbers are actually used, uh, actual companies on the JSC here. You can see 9% times 1.5 times 1.5 is going to give you, again, a 20% ROE. So this is just maths that we're looking at here. But if you have a look at the third company here, retailing, this happens to be pick and pay. And you can see pick and pay's profit margin after tax is about 1.3%. Its efficiency is very high. They sell 10 times the value of each asset they have in the business. So for every one rand of assets, their sales is 10 rand. And they have a certain level of gearing. Now, compare them to, for example, SAPI. 
SAPI is the paper and packaging company I used for this number here. And you can see that SAPI is much more profitable than Pick and Pay. Now, if Pick and Pay could double their profit margin from 1.3 to 2.6% without affecting the other numbers in here, which is probably not the case, but if they could, then their ROE would double to 40%. Again, that's just maths. Double one side of the equation, you're going to double the other side. Now, why is it that Pick and Pay has such a low profit margin? Well, you're going to tell me it's because of competition. And that is true. There is a lot of competition in retail. We've got Pick and Pay and Woolworths and ShopRite Checkers and Macro and you name it. We've got uh, lots of competition there. Whereas with paper and packaging, there's only Mondi, Sappy and Mondi. So the, the next question is, why is there so much competition in retailing? Well, if you think about it, it's because the strategists would say there are low barriers to entry. It's easy to become a retailer, or relatively easy. You just rent some space, put up some shelves, and put up some tills, and you know, you're pretty much in business. Maybe it's a little harder than that. But if you're sappy, you've got you need you need 10 years worth of trees growing. You need trucks and paper mills. It's it's hugely capital intensive. So we divide businesses into two broad categories, what we call commodity businesses. Those are ones like pick and pay, where you compete on price because there's lots of competition. And businesses like SAPI, where you've got uh, barriers to entry. In their case, that happens to be capital. Cap it's a very capital intensive industry. But barriers can be in the form of technology or patents or all kinds of things that give you what we call margin. So there are commodity businesses like pick and pay and margin businesses like SAPI. And it's far nicer to be in a margin business where you can control things. Uh, and it's important to try to find ways of protecting the reasons why you have margin and less competition. So you will talk more about that in strategy. Now, you can see here that uh, SAPI, although it's got a high profit margin, it's extremely inefficient. And that's because it's got a huge balance sheet. It's, it needs a lot of assets. And, uh, and it funds that with a lot of debt. But regardless of these ratios here, the important thing to notice is that every industry has to compete with other industries. It's no good saying, ah, yes, but it's a separate industry. Your fund manager who's running your pension fund can easily move your funds from pick and pay to SAPI. And so SAPI needs to deliver returns uh, to compete with, with every other industry that's out there. And if they don't, your fund manager is going to move money from one sector to another sector. Each sector competes. And ROE is a standardized way of measuring performance across different industries. You cannot compare different industries by profit margin. That's driven by barriers to entry. You can't compare them in terms of efficiency. Those are not standardized measures or leverage. Some industries need more gearing than others. So ROE has the advantage that it can be standardized. And there, there are many issues that come out of this. And uh, you can see that with a very low profit margin here, a pick and pay has to worry a lot about people stealing goods, for example. Whereas SAPI is more concerned about other things, destroying their assets. They've got a lot of assets. So if, if somebody comes and burns down the forest, that's going to be a big problem to them. Or stick six inch nails into the timber that's going through the mill, which messes up the mill and gives them downtime. That affects their efficiency. And that is a huge thing for them. So, but the point is, we've got to put these three things, these three levers together to drive performance. Now, you can see here on this next slide here, I'm actually showing you pick and pay's actual data here. And you will see I'm showing you their ROE going back the last 10 years or so. And uh, I need to update this, I guess. But you will notice that if you look, for example, at the bottom here, uh, 10 years ago, you'll see that ROE was 65%. If you take the average of the last three years here, whereas more recently, it's maybe 25%. That is a huge drop in ROE. Now, to explain that, we can go and have a look at the other three factors, the three levers that drive ROE. And you will observe, if you take the average uh, profit margin here, 
across these last three, year, three years is about 2.6%, whereas here in the more recent three years, it's probably close to 1.3%. So their profit margin has halved. That alone is going to have a huge impact on ROE. And in fact, it probably explains pretty much everything here. You'll also observe, though, that the efficiency, just looking at the bottom three here, is maybe 18 times. That's the net asset turnover. And it's dropped right down to maybe 12 times. So that, that's also got worse. They are less efficient. They're not pushing uh, volume through their stores. And if you look at what's happened to their gearing, uh, you'll see it on average used to be maybe about 1.4. And it's it's kind of sitting much higher. It's more like 1.6 maybe uh, more recently. And that is typical. When you do badly in terms of your profit margin and your efficiency, you're going to need more money. And so the gearing automatically goes up. That is not a good thing. And investors would be worried about that. So we can learn stuff just by looking at those charts. Now, all of this, the, our structure that we talk about here is called DuPont. It comes from the DuPont Chemical Company. And uh, they start with ROE and break it down into its three main levers. The profit margin is focused very much entirely, in fact, on the income statement. Activity is focused on the balance sheet, the asset side of the balance sheet. And gearing is the mix of equity and debt that shareholders provide. So it gives us a nice structured way at, of looking at ratios. And one can kind of drill down even further. If there's a problem with the, with the first lever, the profit margin, it can only be related to pricing, costing, or product mix, and the relationship on those three things and the volume of goods that are sold. If you've got a problem with efficiency or activity here, it's got something to do with the assets. Maybe you've got too much work in progress or too much inventory or whatever. And if the problem relates to gearing, you're going to find that that ratio at the end there is the one that gives you trouble. Now, we can extend this DuPont model here and link it to growth. And if you haven't read it, I want to encourage you to go and read chapter 8 in your book. Because this explains the linkage and it takes our model a step further. You can see before we had profitability, activity or efficiency and gearing that gave us ROE. And you can see down here, I'm showing you the first two levers together, give you RONA. Then uh, if you add the leverage, it changes RONA into gearing. And now we're multiplying by the retention ratio. This is the proportion of profits that is not paid out as a dividend. So if you pay out 50% of your profits, the retention ratio is 50%. If you pay out 100% of your profits as a dividend, the retention ratio then is zero. And then you're going to find uh, this, is, this links to the sustainable growth rate of a company. Now, to illustrate this here, I want you to, uh, you can, having read that chapter in the textbook, I want you to go and have a look at this case study, which is in the book here. We've got it on this page uh, as well. And I want you to have a go at trying to to, to find a solution for this company here. You can see we've got some of these ratios. There's their margin, their efficiency, their gearing, and this is their retention ratio here. And you can see if you take the first three numbers and you multiply them together, you're going to get their ROE. And if you multiply the ROE by the retention ratio here, it halves it. That's why the sustainable growth rate is 14% here. And you can check these numbers if you like over there across each year. And I want you to have a look at this, uh, take a pencil and write down your solutions. What solutions would you recommend? You'll see the bank doesn't want to put in any more money and they are, uh, and that's because their gearing, you can see it here, has got to be too high according to the bank. So you put this video on pause and come back once you've got your solution. Right, so I'm assuming that you've ended the pause and that you are now back again having thought of your own solution here. And I'm not sure what you said. Maybe you, some of the options would relate to let's increase the profit margin. You might have said let us sweat the assets a little more. You might have said, well, we can't put in more financial, more debt because the bank is saying no more debt. Maybe we could ask the shareholders to put in more equity. That would be a solution as well. Or you might have said, 
Why don't we retain more of our profits? Now, all of those are possible solutions. You might have also said maybe we should slow down the growth. Now, just we could spend a bit of time talking about all of these things, but most of those solutions do not deal with the underlying problem. For example, if you uh, simply stop paying dividends, shareholders are going to hate you for a start. It will improve the sustainable growth rate, but it's not going to enable you to grow at the required growth rate up here of 25%. And you're actually just treating symptoms of a problem. When a doctor is treating a patient, they don't want to just treat the symptoms. They want to deal with the underlying problem. Now, you can see that the asset turnover hasn't actually changed. So that is not a problem. One doesn't want to sweat the assets anymore. That isn't going to solve anything. And if you're a shareholder, your eyes are going to be on ROE. You're going to see it going 28, 27, 20, 17, 15, 10, 5, 0, and so on. No shareholder is going to want to throw more money into this company. We need to fix it. And in fact, the obvious problem relates to their profit margin. And it is very likely that this company is growing very fast. We can actually see that it is, and they're projecting to grow at 25% here. And they're achieving the growth, the growth by cutting their profit margin. They're giving away product. And that in itself is a problem. We, what we need to do is put up the price or cut, cut or increase um, put up the prices or maybe spend more money on marketing and that type of thing. Uh, and improve the profit margin, that by definition is likely to slow down the growth. And we should not see the growth rate as being the ultimate objective of a business. It's true we like to have growth, but ROE is more important. There comes a time when businesses need to actually deliver to the shareholders. And so we need to fix this problem in this particular instance. Not all cases have got the same problem, but we need to fix this problem here by dealing with the fact that their profit margin has been declining steadily over the last four years. And um, we would like to get that to be uh, back where it was. And, and if that means slowing down the growth rate, well, so be it. That's a better outcome for investors. I hope you found this useful.